keep people clicking on ads. Mm -hmm. You wish to go to another country, to a foreign city without a GPS. Hello, hello. So we are changing the name of the podcast once again. Are you happy? I'm very happy. The podcast will be called Digital Pragmatism because uh, we are consolidating the brand and it was just a temporary name with the antipath. So it will be called Digital Pragmatism because I think that pragmatism towards digital services and technology is something that is useful. And we're going to talk today about a tweet by Nassim Nicholas Taleb who wrote on Twitter, are you okay with responding to Twitter with the podcast episode? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Nassim Nicholas Taleb wrote a tweet that says, just as people who use word processors lose their aptitude to write lengthy documents longhand, anything you do with technology brings progressive and irreversible atrophies to your natural abilities. So this is a digital minimalistic tweet by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Well, I think that when you use technology wisely and you are not overuse it it will be rather help for you mm -hmm. and not an obstacle uh, you're talking about using technology wisely what is wisely so wisely for me is to know how um for example smartphones are designed mm -hmm. how in general today's technology is designed so it is designed to keep our attention yeah. and uh, because we have a digital era with attention economy so our attention is commodity yeah. so if you are aware of that you can use technology in a better way in a better way in a way that is not exploiting you uh, yes <laughs> okay this is a very so this is one courageous point. <laughs> statement i'd say so this is one point okay and the second point is that technology will help you mm -hmm. but uh, you have to always ask you a question so what will happen if technology disappear will you be able to navigate yeah. by yourself in a city, in Without a forest. A GPS, yeah. Yes. You know, uh, uh, Tim Ferriss once said that if you are a rich person, you should each three months pretend that you are poor. Mm -hmm. So live uh, a, a month on $300, $500, depending on where you are in the world. In San Francisco, it's a really, really small number. Just to, uh, to know that you would be able to survive on such a budget. And I would like to also explain myself with this, how to use technology, that we are able to use technology wisely. Because no. we were talking about that we shouldn't use smartphones. And, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> for example, we are using a lot of applications to organize ourselves. So it is also a technology that helps us to organize our daily life. Of course, but I think that there is a difference if you use uh, applications on desktop computers and if you use mm -hmm. them on, on laptops. It's, uh, it's, it's the same as with internet. Uh, do you remember a time where you didn't have the internet in your pocket, but you had to sit down in front of a computer to use the internet? Uh, and... I think that there was a threshold uh, that was crossed in 2011-2012 where, where the, the internet browsers in the iPhones were so well developed that using the internet on mobile was possible. It was not something that you had to do out of necessity, but it was actually comfortable in 2011-2012. And, uh, and then there were the notifications that were invented. And so I think that when you use an application on the desktop computer today, it's as if you used a piece of paper in 2011. Mm -hmm. you know? An application, especially used for productivity, for, for managing projects, will not hunt for your attention. Whereas uh, a lot of applications on smartphones do it. Yeah, we are using technology. We are not extremists. We are not saying technology is bad. We are saying uh, 
that we should think about how this technology will interact with us and what is the business model. I think that the business model question is the most important. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, overuse of technology uh, harm our social abilities. Yeah, but th this is the question of, of Facebook. Uh, you remember that the premise of Facebook was you will know what is happening with your friends. And basically, a lot of people were sold on this uh, promise. But what was the result? You didn't phone your friends because you knew what mm -hmm. was happening uh, via Facebook. And so uh, a technology that sh was marketed as something that will put us closer would actually pull us apart. But I think that the, the, the key element is, is the business model. If the business model is to... What is the business model of Facebook? Keep people clicking on ads. Mm -hmm. the, the, the promise of, uh, of the contact with friends is actually a disguise to keep you clicking on ads, to, 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 to stick to the feed. And the longer you are sticking to the feed, the more ads you will see and the more ads you will click. And this is a kind of, uh, of service that I think that we should avoid and on desktop and, not, uh, and on mobile because the business model is bad for us. Productivity applications, project management applications, I don't know, uh, applications that we use for making those videos. This is another kind of technology and the advancements in this kind of technology are also very, very big, but it is helpful. Whereas the fact that the brightest minds in Silicon Valley uh, working at Facebook are actually thinking how to maximize your time spent clicking on the ads. It's, it's a lost potential, don't you think? Mm -hmm. That's the tweet uh, by Nicolas Taleb uh, is making you wish to go to another country, to a foreign city without a GPS and just by using a paper map. No. <laughs> just to train your human uh, abilities to orient yourself, just to train your human abilities to ask for directions. No, but it encourages me to try to do this in my home country. You know. Okay, so you want to go uh, to a new city in Poland, but without using a GPS? Yes. 15 years have passed since the uh, invention of Google Maps, let's say. And today, if you go to the forest or to the mountains without a GPS, it's considered something heroic. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that this illustrates what will happen with humanity in the future. <laughs> Basically, the same thing is with Elon Musk willing to go to Mars. Don't you think that Elon Musk, with his abilities and his money, should probably solve climate change and not think about how to take humanity out of the earth? Yes, you are right. I still remember traveling with parents with a... With a paper map? With a paper map. I remember it also. When I played concert with my band, we actually had really serious beefs inside of the, 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 the van because one of our friends, uh, our bass player was using a paper map mm -hmm. and we were using Google Maps and we were arguing which is better. <laughs> so this is crazy that it is heroic not to take your Google Maps with you. Actually, <laughs> So the next time uh, we have to travel somewhere, we are not taking any GPS or just not taking Google Maps. Not taking Google Maps. <laughs> not taking any GPS, I would say. <laughs> and we should take the highway and look just uh, to the signs on the highway and orient ourselves like that. This is the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. And see you in the next one.